Hi, if you are new here, I'm Kanitia, and if you're already watching this channel, welcome back. Today we are going to watch second season of anime made in abyss, and it's been a bit of a break between the first season and this one, and I also watched a movie between the seasons, but I feel like I generally remember most of the important parts, so I'm really excited going into the second season let's see what it has let's go all right I i'm super nervous for some reason The ship looks pretty, but it's <laughs> trying to figure out what's going on. Oof. Yeah, but... Maybe he looks like a person, but... People devouring Pete, that's how he calls it the golden city well they are obviously talking about the abyss and it's the compass that we saw Yeah, we are going right to the horrible part from the very beginning. Well, it's... Uh, what's it called? <laughs> Protein? He 
kind of looks like a bug himself. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> same compass that Rika had, right? Three sages of Ganshu. Even if it doesn't exist, okay. <laughs> Wait, really? That, that's interesting. and stuff. <laughs> but because of what, like, you're put into it, your feelings about it, or qualities that are not visible. Yeah, basically he says in the soul, so... He is so wise! <laughs> yeah... Yeah, no wonder her eyes look work, that's her name? Look dark after everything she was through. And even here, like, it seems like she's in a much nicer place, but she has this seasickness. I wonder if it happens before the events we have, like with Rika now, or they're just from the different part of the world. I'm just thinking, did, did I see it? Mm. the golden city of the scorching sun. I'm just thinking, are these completely different characters? Or could this be flashback of some older characters that I met in first season and don't remember? Mm. 
because it looks like it was just like the search for the place near the abyss, so to say, right? The music is so cool. I, I don't um, how to even like describe it. Very light and emotional. Wait, it actually does look kind of golden now. And see, there's nothing around it. So I think that is a, how to say it, flashback, so to say. I'm not sure it's not the right word. But like backstory? Backstory? Of how this settlement came to be, I think. Oh, but there are people living here. <laughs> He's so excited. And is this the same compass that Riku got? It looks pretty similar, I think. Maybe a bit different in color, but I might be incorrect. Is there only one of it? Mm hmm. He knows their language already. <laughs> ah, the compass. He's very excited. Well, it seems to be precious to him. And so they're saying that there's like a deep inside of it is the golden city. It doesn't sound very enticing. <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, it's the same one that was looking at her in an impressed way. What the heck? She's still like super small. How do they deduce this already? <laughs> and like, what? I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, that's a creepy thing to say, dude. <laughs> Yeah, but like the anime itself is dangerous. 
anything can happen. And we know how abyss, how dangerous abyss is. But I think it could be the start of the civilization we saw in the previous, in the first season. Even though their party is small. Ah, it's the first reaction of the go into the lower levels, right? When you go down and up. Yeah, it's the curse of the abyss. He's never deterred by anything. <laughs> yeah, it's the excitement of the unknown, and especially since Gamsha. I think that's the eye that we saw in the ending of the movie, right? Maybe I should have, like, refreshed my memory. Yes, it is the same eye. Wait, we are going to the present suddenly. I thought the whole episode is gonna be a backstory. What the heck? So, these are the people that probably actually went to Golden City, no matter, like, how many of them survived. And the civilization probably formed of people who were already living there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be confusing without watching the movie. Good thing I, I was told to watch it. <laughs> She even calls her. <laughs> um. Ooh. That's like an ocean dweller. So we are going through the ocean in like this kind of but but a scuff. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Sorry. 
bist du vor der Toilette? Lose while relieving? Why? Because they're distracted? I mean, the, the speed, yeah, it, it is a perfect fit for a toilet, to be honest. It is like a container, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uncomfortable, but like, what can you do, right? That's natural. That is really pretty. <laughs> so we went through the sea of corpses and we are now... Did I have... Wait, the sea of corpses is like second to last. Capital of the unreturned is the next level. And they, their expedition got there pretty safely, like... They were very prepared. And I think it makes sense because yeah, we are in the capital of and this is this is the last one. There's nothing after that. And this is the end of the episode. So yeah, I think maybe I, I probably talked about this before. It's pretty obvious that the effects when you are ascending they're getting worse the lower you are and so obviously you can't return because when you start ascending fate will reach its end the effects will be too much and you will die i was simply certain of that i don't know the reason even though my passion burns hot enough to tarnish gold It sounds so positive, like the, how they sing it. The silhouette of my longing seems to only get farther away. I'm overflowing. Come take my hand and grip it tight. The, the lyrics of the ending songs, the, the opening songs, let's trade pain for pain, are also making me feel will turn fallen petals into our sustenance. With every wound, I will be formed and find myself in my shape. Like, th they should be related somehow to the anime after the awakening. But I have no, no idea what they mean. Let's go and let our sound ring out forever. Because it's like to walk. It, it, it sounds nice. Yeah, I guess there are a few ways you could interpret this ending song. That... No matter like what hardsh hardships uh, we have, uh, I will like stand up after every fall, after every wound, I will still like be myself and go forward and we will do it together hand in hand. Uh, that's how I understand it anyway. This episode actually flew by pretty fast. It was very interesting with the... I feel like I should have seen this kind of hair color that red and white but now i'm thinking about it it was probably a character maybe from another anime that i felt like oh i seen this kind of hair somewhere should i remember this character uh, but probably not probably it was someone from the different anime that i like saw the character but not the anime so it doesn't have any place in my head uh, because it seems like this group of travelers they did reach this uh, capital of the unreturned and well they did not return from it just like they said in that but we could not return we stay there 
Uh, so we don't know what happened with them next but i feel like that was a pretty cool transition here i actually thought okay this is going to be like full episode of this kind of backstory what happened way before the events of like the present day that we have in season one but then i think it when they went into the eye and we saw our group from first season rika and everyone and it kind of paralleled the journey of that group of travelers i thought it was pretty cool and then we don't see yet like what happened to them there but i think maybe if we got introduced to them um it is possible that we will get some more flashbacks of these characters when we explore this city maybe we will find something related to them it seems like it was a long time ago so they're probably dead by now maybe something that remains of them if there are actually people living there maybe they're like kids grandkids or something like that uh, so they might still be mentioned uh, so i should probably write down their names uh, but that was obviously like i feel like now i should be prepared for horrible things and like imagery happening in this anime i just didn't expect to go like right into the <laughs> abyss from the very beginning of the episode because especially like scenes of i feel like rape was also implied and torture and these are my worst triggers i think both of them and uh, so it was very uncomfortable and uh, i was happy that they didn't show it maybe it will happen in the future but when there was this cat-like creature i thought shit now he's going to like murder this cat and we didn't see her on the ship so it might have happened um and i'm thankful they didn't show it <laughs> at least in this episode i don't i don't want to see more of the flashbacks of this horrible man and we don't know what happened to him uh, so I'm, I'm not sure if it's going to be revealed but obviously um our main character here with red and white hair yeah i'll probably have to write down the name i forgot it already uh, she i actually i thought it was a boy at first but she was referred as a girl so she um probably took either took the compass and ran away or something happened to the dude like he died and she took a compass and just walked away and then met the captain um something like this so maybe like it's um the gaps that you can easily fill in with something pretty reasonable sounding so i don't feel like it necessarily needs to be shown but at the same time it still leaves an opportunity for the anime for the writers uh, to, for everyone to show what happened still in some more flashbacks but overall i think it was a really cool beginning of the second season and it seems like yeah because by the time we watch the season one in the pre present time uh, there are a lot of people living there there's like a whole bustling civilization and uh, in this uh, backstory we only saw one tribe and um, so either this tribe evolved into a more like big bustling civilization or maybe more travelers came to this place and another question i have is uh, like the number of compasses they gave their compass away actually they didn't take it into abyss they gave it away to the old man uh, so it stayed there on the surface at that point of time just like also thinking about that uh, it seemed like uh, he put a lot of weight into this artifact and it was shown to be an important artifact to us in the first season so so we'll see what will happen in the next episode uh, but i think that will be it for today maybe we'll i have some like random thoughts like this is horrible that she calls her whistle pushka <laughs> it makes me uh, because this movie was so traumatic and then also this realization that we're already in the capital of the unreturned and i kind of felt 
I thought it was going to be a longer journey to get there, and we are already there, and there's a whole like season in front of us, uh, so I'm super curious what is going to unfold there. Uh, so yeah, I think these are just the final thoughts, and we are gonna end it for today, for now, and uh, I'll go watch uh, the next episode. I really excited for it, really curious. Uh, so I hope you liked uh, my reaction. Please share your thoughts, by the way, in the comments down below without spoilers, of course. I already forgot my own outro because I took such a long break. Uh, but yeah, we are doing six episodes of Made in Abyss this month. It, half the month has already passed, so I have to like pick up the pace. Yeah, so, but share your thoughts without spoilers. And so just on this episode, maybe if you feel like I forgot something from the previous season that you want like to remind me or something that I missed in this episode. And with that, yeah, thank you for watching and see ya. Mm -hmm.